All right, first up today on this Sunday, tips that might just save your life. We have advice from two veteran cops about what you should do if you suddenly find yourself in a dangerous situation. No one, of course, wants to be the victim of a crime, but if you know what to do if the worst happens, you're that much more likely to avoid getting hurt. That's right. Detective Lisa, Lisa Hudson is a crime scene investigator. She's also the incoming president of the International Association for Identification, which is the largest forensics organization in the world. Also joining us is Captain Brian Zalewski. He is a SWAT team commander and certified instructor in handguns, defense tactics, and workplace violence preparedness. Both are with the Wauwatosa Police Department and both have their guns today. What? <laughs> Don't leave, Just don't leave home without them. Don't right. leave home without them. You're not supposed it. to. Great to see you guys. Thank you for being here. I think Thank this you. is a, an extremely important topic that we're going to talk about. And this is something I think we all fear that you're going to end up in a situation and you're not going to know what to do in that moment. So these are things that we can think about, practice, be ready for, to potentially be ready if anything were to ever happen to us. Is this what you tell people? Is that the more you, the more you know, the more ready you are, the better you could handle yourself? Well, I think the more aware you are when you are going out of the house, the better you are. Yeah. Um, if you leave the house and you are sitting there, you know, on your phone, going through a parking lot and, and constantly on your phone, because most people are nowadays. Right, looking down. Um, yeah, you're going to be, you could be the victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, you know, the, the bad guys are looking for. They're looking for opportunity. Yeah, yeah. they're looking for you to be preoccupied. All right, I saw this recent post. A Facebook post and wanted to ask you about it because it was supposedly from a Taekwondo expert and it was martial arts instructor who said the strongest part of your body is your elbow so use it if you can if someone tries to attack you. Is that good advice? Is the elbow a good weapon? Uh, elbow is a very, a very good weapon however uh, like a lot of things those type of skills to develop them take a lot of training. Uh, to teach somebody to punch or kick or defend themselves properly mm. takes years of training um, so if somebody's that close to you that you're in elbow range, uh, they're probably too close in the first place. Okay. Uh, so we go back to that situational awareness piece of, you know, we want to be in a relaxed, alert state so that we avoid hopefully having somebody get into our personal space that's trying to harm us. The two of them are going to show us some actual techniques in just a second, but we want to go through some of these scenarios. How do you know when to fight back and when to comply? Because I always, you know, I, I worry fighting back can make a situation worse, mm -hmm. but complying could get yourself killed. If it's something that has to do with a property crime, if they're coming up and they want your cell phone or your wallet, give them, give them to them. Give because, them your purse, right? Right, because they, that's all they want. They, those things are replaceable. Your life is not replaceable. Yeah. And, um, and if they're going to come up and take that, you know, give it to them and, and try and get away. You're making a distinction then between somebody who wants to steal something from you mm -hmm. or rob you and somebody who intends to hurt you, rape right. you, or kill you. If that's the case, is it fair to say you're in a fight for your life and you got to fight back? Yeah, those are two completely different uh, situations. Their intent is completely different in those. So if it's a property crime and they want something from you, best advice is, like Lisa said, to comply. If it's something where they're trying to take your personal safety away, uh, whether it be through a sexual crime or, or a violent crime, uh, that's the time that you need to get away from that situation. You need to fight to defend yourself. Uh, do anything in your power uh, to get away from that situation. Okay. A lot of that starts with mindset. Um, situational awareness is all about mindset thinking about it ahead of time, mentally preparing yourself that, one, I won't put myself in that situation, but if something does happen to me, that I'm prepared to react and to defend myself and to fight for my life. I feel like I wouldn't think that fast in that situation, yeah. and some of it's going to be these reactions. You've got two moves that people can know and do, right, if they're, they're kind of like two fight back moves if you find yourself in a place where you're being attacked. Stand up if you guys would. Now, in this case, Lisa, okay. you're the attacker. She's the aggressor. Because right? I always am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so walk us through this. Yeah, so two things to keep in mind is, is again, somebody's trying to take your personal safety from you. Mm -hmm. um, they want to do physical harm to you or something else. Um, under stress, your body is not going to allow you to think of this technique that you learned in class. Right. Uh, it takes years to learn how to properly punch or kick somebody. So we want to go with, with some sort of a gross motor skill move that I just can do so that I can get away from this attacker. I can use this if she's in front of me, on the side of me, grabs me with one hand, two hands. Uh, and it's really just a, a simple move that if somebody comes and tries to grab me, one, I want to shrink my neck up real small, as small as I can. So I want to pull my shoulders. shoulders up towards my ears. Um, and then I just want to take my strong hand. I want to bring it up over my head. And just simply, I'm just going to swing it down as hard as I can across the top of her hands. Um, and then 
I'm free and I'm going to start yelling stop and I'm going to run away You're from that situation. You're going to get away as fast as you can. Okay. Right. So I want to try it just so that. Yeah. So the first thing, though, you would say is don't let somebody get that close to you, right? Correct. So, yeah, the, yeah, okay. the best thing you can do is not be in this proximity. But if I aggressively come towards you and attack you, again, now it's time for you to get aggressive and violent to get surprise me Molly. and get me off of it. So, violent. So harder I'm going to just. You got to do oh, it harder really? than that. You okay. got to do it harder than that. There. There you go, right? Oh. So, <laughs> So now you're free, and now you run away. <laughs> now I'm running. Oh, but that's the thing is go. just come down as hard as you can, almost like get my armpit to your Correct, to where wrist. my wrists are. Wrist. And you're trying to just break that hold, and it works with one hand, two hands. Come back over here, Lisa. Uh, right. And again, you don't need to think much about it other than think about it ahead of time so that if you're in that situation, you're not, you know, you're not. We're running out of time. Right. Yeah. So we're going to go through a bunch of questions okay. really quick. One of them on Facebook was if you're ever stuck in the trunk of a car, <laughs> you should stick your arm out one of the taillights or and wave it, it around first. or kick it out, mm -hmm. wave your hand. The driver won't see you, but motorists will. I and think you watch too much television. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? I mean, that's ever. Does that not ever have that? that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I have seen that once, and it was on Chicago PD, so I can't speak <laughs> from personal experience. You've but never seen that happen I've in a situation? I've never seen somebody get thrown in the trunk of a in car. In how many years? Taken away. I've been there for 27 years. Okay. Wow. That's good fascinating. To know. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of people TV. tend to get in their cars after shopping, eating, working, looking on their phones, mm -hmm. not driving away. Is that that's a bad idea? That's a very bad idea. I think you need to um, make sure, like I said before, be aware of your surroundings. Um, if you're on the phone or you're sitting there doing your checkbook at that time, um, you know you don't come in the car and lock your doors right away. Most people don't. Um, if you start the car, the car doors will lock once you pull away. So. Those doors aren't going to lock until you until you're pulling away. So be cognizant of what you're doing and and uh, get get going. Yeah. If someone has a gun, do you do what they say or do you run? I would do what they say at the time if they, because they have a gun. They want what you have in your hands. Okay. What if they say I want? Because I've always heard if you, you you do everything you can for someone not to get you to a second location. If someone has a gun to your head and says mm. drive off, uh, and you, once you go to that next location, I've heard you're going to be killed or raped. Well, again, it's it, what is their intent? So are they are they telling you that that, hey, take me to the ATM because I want to get all the money out of mm -hmm. your account is a slightly different response potentially than drive. than the drive. I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to rape you. Is it a good um, idea to crash your car? Uh, that would be incident specific. I mean, it, it, okay. under extreme circumstances, you have to do whatever you have to do s to survive. Um, and although there's not a perfect answer, thinking about these things ahead of time really puts you in that mindset of, I'm going to be able to survive no matter what is brought my way. Um, criminals look for easy targets. Yeah. So it goes back to don't let yourself become an easy target. Uh, and then if something does happen, it, it truly could be a fight for your life. Get in that mindset. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't be on your phone. Thank you so much, you guys. Good to see you guys. Yeah. I'm ready. Go Tosa police. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. You love your country gun. <laughs> <laughs> After. All right. For